more research and incentives, we can break our dependence on oil with biofuels and become the first country to have a million electric vehicles on the road by 2015. Well, 2015 is almost here, and guess what? Nearly four years and $8 billion in taxpayer-funded loans later, we're nowhere near the president's push for Americans to have a million electric vehicles. In fact, we're more than 70% away from that goal. And that's why some here say, stop using our tax dollars to try and make us buy things we don't want. Hi, everybody. I'm David Asset. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus to find out with Steve Forbes, Rich Cargard, Sabrina Schaefer, Mike Ozanian, Rick Unger, and John Tamney. Steve, 70 percent away from that goal. That's a terrible record. Yeah, it's typical of uh, Washington trying to regulate our behavior outside of a major war is preposterous, wrong. It also inhibits the development of technology because government only knows how to do what already exists. So it's not only a waste of money, it, it cripples the development of technology, waste of taxpayers' money. And moreover, government has no business, whether it's soda pop or cars, let the people decide. It's a democracy, isn't it still? Right yeah. on, I would say to that. Rick, uh, what would you just say to that? What, 275000 a million, you're splitting hairs. <laughs> now, okay, it didn't work very well, did no. it? No. Uh, look, you have to be careful about this. I take your point. Obviously, incentivizing the purchase of these cars did not work out. But you got to, you know, government has to be brave sometimes to help things get off the ground. You can't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I would be with you if you said, end this one, didn't work. But let's not end it for everything. But, Rich, it's, there's so many things that the government has failed with billions of our tax dollars to try to push down our throats. Sin fuels, even Al Gore admits that doesn't work. Solar energy, health care. Uh, obviously, people are now paying fines instead of buying health insurance they don't want. But solar energy, by the way, there, there are a lot of companies that have just gone bankrupt as a result of a bad policy. Yeah, I mean, let me ask my good friend Rick Unger, how brave is it to spend other people's money? That's not brave. I mean, come on. You know, I think what's been totally missed here and was missed by Washington, and frankly it's missed by a lot of people in Silicon Valley, is the impact of horizontal drilling and fracking technologies, which have brought down the price of oil and thus gas and thus made electric cars not as competitive right. as these coastal elites thought they would be back in 2009. And the government didn't want that. The government wanted exactly the opposite. The Sinfuels, Mike, the fact is government should not and cannot change consumer habits. Well, right? I, I think it's even worse, David, when the government succeeds in changing consumer habits. Look at the housing <laughs> crisis of 2007. They succeeded there, right? They had really low interest rates. With the Community Reinvestment Act, they forced banks to lend money to people who couldn't afford mortgages. And we had this huge bubble that collapsed and caused tremendous harm that we're still getting through. And by the way, the government is still telling Fannie and Freddie to support mortgages with only 3% down. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, John, Mike brings up a good point. Incentives do matter. But even when there are incentives, and there have been a lot of incentives for solar companies, for Sinfuels, uh, for health insurance, those, those incentives have broken down when we don't want it. Yeah, government shouldn't be creating incentives, and this speaks to hubris in a major way on the part of the political class that is too common. If you talk to the best investors in the world, they'll freely acknowledge that they're incorrect nearly half the time. So the idea that there could be knowledge inside the Obama White House or any White House about the future buying habits of consumers is laughable. Government shouldn't invest, period. Yeah, and Rick, this incentivizes something that I know you hate, which is crony capitalism. All these insiders getting these special deals from their friends in government. Well, first, I'd better acknowledge my friend Rich Cargold's point just to stop all the nasty tweets I'm going to get. You're right. It doesn't take a lot of bravery to spend other people's money. And I don't like crony capitalism. You're right. But look, you know, we doesn't have, this incentivize crony capitalism? It, it however? can. I will acknowledge that. But at the same time, we have used tax incentives for some very successful things. Look, oil industry has done very well based on tax incentives and it's delivered for us. So I, all I think I'm really saying is I take your point on how it didn't work for the electric car, but let's not throw out the baby. Steve the Forbes, I used to work at the Wall Street Journal. The editor had a rule, Bob Bartley's rule number one, which is that taxes should never be used for social engineering. 
Well, absolutely right. And Rich touched on something that's very important. When you allow free markets to operate instead of trying to manipulate them, free markets always, without exception, will turn scarcity into abundance. Today's luxuries into tomorrow's commodities. And we're seeing it play out in energy. We once thought we were running out of it. Now we're going to have a surfeit of natural gas and yeah. other and oil, and it's just beginning. And Rich, I'm wondering if, if that surplus of, of gas and oil was delayed because of the government's attempt to push sin fuels down our throats, which was a bad technology. We didn't want it. Uh, if it hadn't been for the sin fuels, perhaps we would have had this natural gas boom 10, 15, 20 years earlier. It's possible. I, you know, you'd really have to dive into the details of horizontal drilling and fracking, which is on a very, you know, rapid evolutionary path. It's one of these technologies that has surprised everybody by how better it's getting year by year. And but, you know, that's that's what happens in the free market world, as Steve points out. Mike, I'm wondering if we've learned our lesson. Have we? I mean, they're 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 the mistaken. Uh, the, the solar energy companies have gone out of business. There's even, as I said, even Al Gore admits sin fuel program was a disaster. Are, are we still embroiled in this? Are we going to get involved in this or have we learned our lesson? David, I think we have not learned our lesson. If you look at the omnibus bill that was just passed, it's huge. It's it's full of uh, giveaways and 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 you know, special treatments. And my, my concern is that the mainstream Republican Party and the mainstream Democratic Party, there's very little difference. They, they both are involved in crony capitalism. John, we got to emphasize that point of Mike's. The fact is, this is not a Democratic issue only. There are a lot of Republicans that are into this stuff as well. Oh, yeah, let's face it. Go back to 2008. Republicans and Democrats bailed out car makers and banks. And the tragedy of bailouts is that once you take that money, you're no longer in the business of profit. And let's ask ourselves the question, absent the bailout of car makers, would they have been forced to roll out electric cars that no one wanted? I, I think not. Sabrina, you're in the middle of it all inside the Bellway. What do you think? Well, I'm just thinking back to what my grandmother used to do, right? She would th throw spaghetti at the wall to see if it was done, and that's what government is always doing. Look, <laughs> we're talking about energy. Americans want reliable, clean, and affordable energy. I say let, let the producers respond to that demand and get government out of the way, because when they're picking winners and losers in energy, we are the losers with higher energy prices and a, and a worse off economy. But Sabrina, I'm wondering if it's too late. To Mike's point that they're, they're, they're still so embroiled in this, uh, there's a street in Washington, D.C. called K Street. That's where all the lobbyists work, and they, they rent these four, four or five thousand dollar a month uh, offices. Is is K Street so attached to the to the government right now that they won't let go? Well, I think this is exactly the reason that we need to rein in that progressive state, right? When we talk about big government, it's not just what's going on in the Capitol. It's what's going on um, around the Capitol. The reason Washington is growing is exactly this. Everybody has an interest. Everybody is hoping that they can get something incentivized for themselves. Um, it's a bad way to govern, and it's a bad future for America. Good last point.